Uh, here I want to guide you through a simple Rails application from start to finish created in Ruby and Steel, which is uh, the Sapphire Steel software Ruby and Rails IDE for Visual Studio. So here I'm starting File, New Project. Select Rails Project, give it a name. Uh, select a directory if you want to. I'm just going to accept the default. Now set up the database. SQLite is normally the simplest one. Give your database a name. And click OK. It also supports other databases, but for simple uh, local development, the SQLite uh, database server is normally the simplest. So wait until Rails runs all the relevant scripts and creates your database structure. Ruby and Steel has added all the files and directories into the Solution Explorer. So now I'm ready to create the actual application. So to do that, I will generate. I'll choose a scaffold which sets up a lot of the nitty-gritty details without me having to do too much. So I'm going to create a post type of data. This is a, a table in the database with a few different fields. I'll have the title, and that'll be a sim simple string, body, text created at colon and the type will be date time. Let me check I've got all this right. Click go and when the script has run the files that are generated will be synchronized and they'll be added into the Solution Explorer. Next thing I want to do is I want it to create the basic structure of the database. And to do that, I need to run Ruby and Steel Rake. So I don't have to go to the command prompt to do this. Obviously, I'm doing this all in, in uh, Visual Studio. I want to migrate the database, and that's going to create the, the database structure for me. So db colon migrate, click go. Again, behind the scenes, things are going on, and the script console that's stocked in Visual Studio shows me that Rake is running. And when it's finished, it tells me posts have been migrated. Now I'm ready to run. So to run, I'll run with debugging. So I'll start the debugger, that's F5 as default, puts it into debug mode. I can now launch the web browser. Now, let me just refresh this to check that Rails is running. Okay, so welcome aboard. That shows that Rails is running. By the way, I've got the default address here that's been set up uh, in Visual Studio, you can do that. You can change that in Tools Options, Environment, Web Browser, and just set the home page. So I've set it to localhost, colon 3000. The 3000 is the port that I'm using to run my Rails applications. Now, in order to run this application, I've created a table which is called Post. Rails pluralizes the whole thing and makes it posts with an S at the end. So this should be the address to my home page of my application. Let's see if it's all working. So I've entered the address, wait for Rails to run, and there it is. So before I go any further, I think I'll try out the debugger. So let's go into App Controllers. This is where the Ruby code lives. Posts Controller. Let's go down to the new. So when I create a new post, this Ruby code should run. And let's also go into some of the view template, which defines the pages or parts of the pages that Rails uh, assembles to create the, the, the view that you see in the browser. I think I'll go into Show. I uh, just put a breakpoint here. So this is just to illustrate that breakpoints can work both in pure Ruby and in the ERB files, which define the web pages used by Rails. Go back to my running application. I'll create a new post. Immediately, I hit my breakpoint. At this point, I've got no data in the uh, post at post variable, so nothing shows up there. So I just continue, and let's add something. Title my first post. Let 
not the most fascinating blog post that's ever been written, but never mind. And it's or automatically got the, this is the date time field. It's created all these data entry components automatically for me. I, I haven't had to create this at all. This has all been done by Rails and it's now being displayed uh, in the web browser. So let's create the post. Now I'm in the show uh, template where I put the breakpoint. Let's have a look at post now. So this is the same variable I looked at previously, but this time it's got some data in it because I've already filled out the form with some data. So I've actually posted, I've created my first post data record. So, and you can see also the other features of the Ruby and Steve debugger. I've got the call stack here, which I can navigate through. Uh, if I want to, I can drag this down here and I could expand it in the watch window. And I could use, I could step into, step out of, and so on. So I could use the other features of the debugger. Okay, now I've added a few more posts. I'm just going to show you uh, another example of using the debugger. This time I've put a breakpoint in the index method, and that's the method that executes when the index of the blog, that's this page, is redisplayed. So let me show you in, it in action. I'll create one more post. Again, not a great, greatly interesting post, but it'll do for my example. Create post. Okay, it sh says it's been created. I go back. Now I'm going back to the index this time. So that causes this method to hit the breakpoint here. Now I've already got a number of posts. So this variable here represents all the posts in my database. You can see they're listed here, and I can expand. I can expand them by clicking on the. Uh, plus signs. That's just by hovering in the editor, or if I, if you prefer to do it in the, uh, in the watch window, I can do the same thing down here.